You've got to tune to KEXP. We're listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle. You can find us live online at kexp.org. We're streaming live video of this session today. We are so excited to have Seth Avitt and Jessica Lee Mayfield live in studio. There's actually three of you here today. We have uh, Paul DeFiglia on upright bass with us, too. <laughs> Welcome. And We're excited to be here. We're excited to have you. It's always great to have you in studio doing anything, but you're singing songs today of a local luminary. Uh, I'm a huge Elliott Smith fan, so it's, it's been really fun just, you know, getting to do this. How does it feel to be coming through Elliott Smith territory? He lived a long time in the Northwest. You know, this is the first, this is the, the first time here is the first time we'll have performed these Elliott Smith songs uh, on the West Coast at all. So this is the first, yeah, so I don't know, I'll know how it feels afterwards. We'll have to touch <laughs> base again. Yeah. There's a lot of fans all over the world, but certainly here in the Northwest, you're no, going to... No going to hit some big fans coming up. You'll be at the Neptune tonight, and tomorrow you're at the Crystal Ballroom in Portland. And I cannot wait another minute to hear you perform these songs. <laughs> awesome. <coughs> Baby Britain fills the best Floating over a sea of vodka Separated from the rest Fights problems with bigger problems Sees the ocean fall and rise Counts the waves that somehow Didn't hit her Water pouring from her eyes Alcoholic and very bitter For someone half as small You be a work of art You put yourself apart Until you start We're not to know the couple that Dead soldiers lined up on the table Still prepared for an attack They didn't know they'd been disabled I felt a wave of rush of blood You won't be happy till the bottle's been turned over and now it's ready once again the radio is playing crimson and clover london bridge is safe and sound no matter what you keep repeating and nothing's gonna drag me down to a death that's not worth cheating for someone half as smart Oh, that sounded so beautiful. It's Seth Avitt and Jessica Lee Mayfield singing songs of Elliot Smith. The album just came out, Jessica, uh, Seth Avitt and Jessica Lee Mayfield sing Elliot Smith. And I know I said I'd have you play a couple songs and then I'd talk to you, but I can't <laughs> wait to ask a question. I know that you two have known each other for quite a while and uh, have toured together. And I'm just kind of wondering how the idea for this record came up. I'm sure the, excited, the thought of working together Doing anything is exciting. You complement each other so well. But yeah. how, Thank did, you. how did Elliot Smith's songs 
rise to the top? Well, it's we had known each other for a little while before we realized we were Elliot Smith fans. And then once that, that kind of happened, it might have been related to my dog. We're not sure, but <laughs> I adopted a dog and uh, named him Elliot. And I probably was like, oh, uh, you know, I got this dog. And I was probably gushing about him. And then Seth guessed. Yeah, just uh, I said, what's his name? And she said, Elliot. And I was immediately after Elliot Smith. And she said, yeah. And I was like, really? I was just kind of making a joke. And uh, that started the 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 infinite conversation of uh, just talking about his songs and, and how, how much we love them. Did you just start by, you know, jamming around and playing? Did you know right away, hey, I think maybe we can make a record doing this? We definitely didn't start with, with thinking that we'd make a record. It, it definitely started with uh, a very gradual increase of, of um, a feeling natural singing the songs and playing the songs. But we, uh, we figured out a song called Twilight um, first, and uh, that happened very naturally just uh, in a backstage uh, somewhere when Jessica was opening for, for, uh, for the band. And... Um, and uh, it felt very right and very, very, uh, very alive to me anyway. And um, and so we just went from there. We just started with Twilight and, and, and that led to another one and another one and another one. Before you know it, we were we were trying to make an album. There are so many songs to choose from. I don't even know how I would put it down to 12. Did you just more or less choose songs that were your favorites or ones that you thought you sounded good together? It started with favorites and just kind of there were so many it just kind of started all at once with at least in my opinion I think we were just having fun with the idea and the yeah. thought of singing and playing together and playing these songs that we're you know we both really really love and I think it just went on and on and kind of for me it was addicting to not listen to Elliot Smith and think like well you know could we do this one or I kind of had to shut that off after some point and mm -hmm. I think at one point I told you like I think we've got enough songs right. you're like what about this one and I'm like well how many have we <laughs> recorded <laughs> right right did you record more than you put on the record a little bit yeah a, a few two or three yeah. I think Elliot had seven albums you have songs from all of them except for one his self-titled album did you have access to everything or did you even think about that you just started with songs w we did think about it um not initially but after after we got we got cranking uh, you'll notice on the record there's four from uh that last uh batch of songs he was working on that ended up in the, in the posthumous record from the basement on the hill um and that was that was where our conversation started because jessica and i both have a, a very intense love for uh, the, the work he was making at the end of his life but um but yeah at some point we were like we need to uh we need to get further back than figure eight and, and start, you know, get, you know, try, you know, it, it makes sense to think about uh, representing as much of the catalog as we could uh, in a sensible way. Do you remember how each of you discovered the music, where you started listening and where you, where Absolutely. you journeyed? Yeah, yeah. I remember I, I first heard it in 98, 1998, a uh, close friend in, in college uh, passed me a cassette tape with the song Say Yes on it. And uh, was actually asking me if I could transcribe it for him. So I was uh, er early in my relationship with Elliot Smith's music. I was uh, I was aware of uh, how simple some of the songs sounded, but it had you know if a song sounds like it has three chords, it has eight or nine probably. You know, so that was that was clear right in the beginning for me. His guitar work is deceptively intricate because it no sounds doubt. very very simple. The king king of passing chords. <laughs> Seth David and Jessica Lee Mayfield are live here in the KEXP studios. I want to hear your story. Oh, well, mine's, uh, the first time I heard Elliot Smith was uh, somebody covering him, which is uh, interesting to think about now. But uh, I was, it was probably in summer of 2005, and I was a teenage girl hanging out with an older dude that was old enough to buy alcohol, and he was really uh into starting a band with me and i really didn't like any of his songs and i like snuck him into my room one night and he was playing you know quietly playing me all these songs he had all his lyrics out and i was just like oh you know how do i how do i get this guy out of my house like i'm done and then he played elliot smith's clementine and i was like that's a really good song and he was like oh that's not mine it's elliot smith's and i'm thinking of course and but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then the next day he uh he rode his bike over and uh, brought me the self-titled CD. And so it was almost an Elliott Smith cover band with him or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that band never happened. <laughs> well, I'm glad this band happened. Yes. 
And uh, Seth Avitt and Jessica Lee Mayfield sing Elliot Smith. You got another tune for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do uh, Fond Farewell. The light bright's now black and white Cause you took apart a picture that wasn't right Pitch burning on a shining sheet The only maker that you'd want to meet A dying man in a living room Whose shadow paces the floor Will take you out in the open door This is not my life it's just a fond farewell to a friend It's not what I'm like It's just a fond farewell to a friend Who couldn't get things right A fond farewell to a friend said, really, I just want to dance Good and evil match, perfect, it's a great romance And I can deal with some psychic pain If it'll slow down my higher brain Veins full of disappearing ink Vomiting in the kitchen sink Disconnecting from the missing link This is not my life just a fond farewell to a friend It's not what I'm like It's just a fond farewell to a friend Who couldn't get things right A fond farewell to a friend I see you leaving me And taking up with the enemy Cold comfort of the in-between A little less than a human being A little less than a happy high A little less than a suicide The only thing that you really try This is not my life It's just a fond farewell to a friend It's not what I'm like it's just a fond farewell to a friend Who couldn't get things right A fond farewell to a friend This is not my life It's just a fond farewell to a friend Oh, so beautiful. Seth Avitt and Jessica Lee Mayfield sing Elliot Smith. I'll be doing that tonight at the Neptune Theater, and we are so excited to have them live here in the KEXP studios today and also streaming live video at kexp.org. That song, Fond Farewell, comes from the album we were talking about, From a Basement on a Hill, which yeah. was made um, towards the end of Elliot's life, and he was going through a lot of painful things at that time, and so much of his music is intense, oftentimes heart-wrenching but there's so much beauty there i'm wondering how it feels to inhabit these incredible intense songs full of full of a lot of pain many of them well <laughs> how does it feel it kind of depends on I, I, they're so um they're so complex and there's so much there um that you can pretty much take it anywhere really you know i mean if you if you check in just lyrically and just in the poetry of it um you can e you can even enjoy that even if it's a even if it's a sad theme or a, or a or a rough theme, um, but you can you can check in lyrically you can check in aesthetically you can check in just with the music we were talking on the bus actually just before we came in here about um, like you wouldn't even really need to speak English to be able to connect somehow listening to his music you know there's just so much there so it um, has a lot of uh, realistic honesty you know and it's like he's not afraid to um, to be open about his darkness or to, you know, shake other people in a sense where some songwriters want to sugarcoat things. And with his music, I I always liked how, you know, it, it's like, yeah, bad, bad things happen. You, you know, people, you know, make mistakes or they have hard lives, you know, and that's 
that's in the music. But you can find hope in there too. There, yeah, there, there are hopeful lyrics. It's not all just a it's not all just a drag, you know. There's there's just so much there. Memory Lane kind of uh has started making me sad during the shows. Oh, yeah. I've noticed like if yeah. and that's the thing like you're saying if you check into the lyrics too much you know it's it's kind of just like spending a a week on like a Elliot Smith binge you know <laughs> I've been on many of those I, yes. I, I discovered the music early yeah. and it's interesting because even though there's a lot of pain for him behind it and we've all experienced some degrees of sadness and sure. sometimes loss in our life I I feel nothing but joy when I listen to the songs. I don't know if it's the melodies or, but I've listened to them, you know, weeks on end, back to back, and it f well, yeah. they fill me with joy. That's the, I mean, that's the, the entire construct of like genuine blues music. You know, if you listen to Robert Johnson, you can feel really good, but if you check in there, there's a lot of darkness there and a lot of sadness there. But I think it's a, a kind of a common theme, uh, an interesting one, but I don't think that it's necessarily that unique to, um, to feel good listening to sad music. Well, I like it because it's something, if you're sad, I mean, you can have someone's yeah. music. To, that's what company. music is for, yeah. kind of, is so you can relate to it and it can make you feel certain ways that, m you know, might not have even been intended by the songwriter. He was a very wonderful songwriter in whole, not just with his lyrics. And we talked about how deceptively simple his songs are seem and, or, and then they're not right. yeah, yeah. and I know that that's true also of the melody it makes me wonder how you approached it some of his earlier albums of course very spare spare with his voice and guitar right. and he built up instrumentation much of it he played himself in his later records and you chose a lot of those songs for the record but you made them somewhat spare like his earlier stuff right yeah yeah I don't know we, we just tried to look at each song as a new kind of a new project you know I feel like the 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 covers that I love the interpretations of, of of original songs that I love like normally are kind of dancing along a line where they're representing the original source but they're also finding their natural voice in it um, I don't I mean it, it wouldn't make any sense for us to to attempt to make like a Xerox copy of it you know and it also wouldn't make sense to get so far away from the source uh, that you lost the original sentiment so we we were trying to kind of toe that line a little bit. Um, but yeah, every song was it was a kind of a new project and, and finding out what what worked in this in this sense. Well, you're honoring the songs and you do such a lovely job. Thank, Thank you for you. saying so. We'd love to hear another one. Yeah. We'll do uh, Pizza La. Mm -hmm. 
first time I saw you I knew it would never last I'm not half what I wish I was I'm so angry I don't think it'll ever pass And I was bad news for you Just because I never meant to hurt you Give me goosebumps. <laughs> Seth Avett and Jessica Lee Mayfield live in the KEXP studios tonight. They'll be at the Neptune Theater. Your voices sound so beautiful together. Thank you. And, uh, one of my favorite things about Elliot Smith albums are the way his voices are multi-tracked. And you two seem to replicate that or achieve that effect with your voices together. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm curious how that came about. Did you think about trying to replicate that effect or did it just kind of come instinctively i think you, you know a lot of it is just us you know enjoying singing together trying to to have both of us you know be present and also some of that when we were recording it was definitely noticing where harmonies might you know be yeah. be nice to have no doubt yeah i, I think um like he what, what he was doing was um you know that technique uh, as far as well as I know he uh heard John Lennon doing it and, and you know this is this unison thing it's the same vocal line they're just happening at the same time unison um and it's weird how those two voices can feel at once um very lonely but you know but still be two voices um but Jessica and I we don't really I don't know I, I might be speaking out of turn but I feel like we, we both come from backgrounds where if there's two voices then it's normally harmony you know yeah. come from a family band or coming from gospel music or um i don't know we, we th that's our natural approach um and really it was more or less like well, wh which ones sound good lonely if they if it sounds right lonely well it'll just be one voice you know and then if it's if, if we if there needs to be some other texture some some more body to it we'll find we'll find a harmony and interestingly enough as we started kind of working it out we, we found i think new dimensions of of the melodies elliot smith would write um because some of the harmonies come across really odd in a, like a really cool kind of way. Um, if, like, if we just do our natural thing and find the third or the fifth or whatever, uh, his melodies were as such that, that, that they create, even though he didn't record them, they create these really interesting harmonies. I think that last song shows that a little bit. Did you come across anything when you were working on some of the songs where you're like, I don't know what he's doing here. I'm just gonna, oh, we're just going to yes. have to do what we're going to yes. do. Yes. <laughs> Certainly. I think there's, and there's a lot of customizing it for for us you know there's only you know we, we can only for me i can only do things so much my own way you know it's almost like where can i fit in yeah. in this you know into this song how, how do i fit not so much you know trying to to replicate it yeah we can, i mean we can't yeah we, we just can't could, we cannot <laughs> replicate him uh for a lot of reasons i mean there's the obvious soul reasons of it but also i mean he would bend melodies and I mean I, I spent so much time studying really really badly filmed YouTube videos of, uh, of Elliot Smith uh, playing and, and, and finding like the same song four times and he's hitting different chords almost throughout the whole song you know and mm -hmm. and you can tell some of that is is on purpose some of it maybe is because he's nervous some of it is is um, just it's that day he interprets it a different way and it's really amazing and really beautiful for whatever the reasons are but but yeah it makes it very difficult to to follow <laughs> oh it kind of sounds fun it is it is fun <laughs> it is fun because then we you know it's a whole different challenge like how does this how do we represent this you know and, and keep keep to the original but make it to where we can sing it and it not sound just totally wrong you know sounds like a pr this is a project that you spent some time on D did you how long were you working on this about three and a half years Right. Yeah, on and off on when and we off. could. Yeah. yeah, we're both uh, you know awfully busy, but I mean it might be a, f a four day section and then you know ten months later another three day section or something like that. You know. well, that's corresponding in between. Yeah, sending know. sending voice memos to each other, talking about hey, we sh what about this one? Do you like that one? And yeah, I like that one. What about that and B or something? You know. Well, what a nice touchstone for your friendship. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Kept us in touch. You got time for one more? 
Totally. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, between the bars? Let's do it. Drink up, baby. Stay up all night with the things you could do. You won't, but you might the potential you'll be. But you'll never see the promises you'll only make. Drink up with me now and forget all about the pressure of days. Do what I say and I'll make you okay. And drive them away, the images stuck in your so beautiful and what such respect to the beauty that he brought to his craft thank you so much thank you thank you it's Seth David and Jessica Lee Mayfield live here in the KEXP studios and tonight they're playing at the Neptune tomorrow you'll be down in Portland at the Crystal Ballroom you've selected some beautiful rooms to portray thank you thank you very much well like like you said there's a lot of beauty in the uh, in the source of this stuff so I wanted to pick rooms that could could uh, accommodate it well you know well, thank you so much for coming in today. It's always so great yeah. to see you. Yeah, thanks for having us. You've got it tuned to KEXP Seattle. Discover great music at kexp.org.